Came down from New oh, York. I remember to, you. We came down from New York together. I remember you. Yeah, I thought you were. You still here? I didn't, I didn't know you still in Indiana. Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, yeah. I remember you. I lose our coworker. Understand? Yeah, Captain. We yeah. have moved on together from New York. Can we stay friends? Huh? Yeah, I remember you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, and I'm his sister. Yes, this is an older sister. Yeah, she was, he was born after me. Yeah. He was living in India, eh? You know, he's, he's still in New York. I mean, he's he's talking about my younger sister, Bridget. Okay. Yeah. She's not here yet. This is the senior class. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Sabe que vai dar
thank you, Father, for your mercy and your grace. Uh, that seems like an odd thing to say at a time like this. But you don't make any mistakes. We all feel a little cheated relative to Martin's age and the time of his departure. But I've never known you to make a mistake. You know what you're doing. You're smarter than us. We just ask that you would grant peace to the family. And we can't go to the grocery store and get no peace. We can only get it from you. And we pray you grant peace. And if there's anybody in the crowd that doesn't know Jesus and the pardon of their sin, we pray you'd help them think about their mortality and the fact that they're going to be here forever mm -hmm. and that they need to make arrangements with the peace giver, Jesus. We just thank and we praise you. And we pray your blessings on this service. In Jesus' name we pray for a second man. Amen. Amen. resurrection of Jesus Christ, those who believe in him have eternal life. That, may, that means that they've been called out of darkness and into the light. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Furthermore, darkness will, darkness will never overcome the light, for the light shines in the darkness. Yes. Much like how even in the darkest room, a flicker of a candlelight is seen, and the light can't be extinguished. If you here today are a Christian, I want you to not let your light be extinguished. And now I'm going to read a, a, a recited prayer. Dear God, thank you for the incredible gift of your son, Jesus Christ. Through his death and resurrection, we have been set free from death and given eternal life. Salvation sets us apart in the midst of darkness. Thank you for overcoming the darkness, Lord. May we live our lives shining brightly to bring your glory and to draw others to you. In Jesus' name, amen. This is a song that our dad would like to have been remembered by. And would you join me in the chorus as I sing through this? I was doing my mother came. 
bridge. I wanted to go outside and come back to the mall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was there for you know, a very long time before I go. But talking about my brother, man, if I woke up in the middle of the night and I get stuck in, in, in Alaska, if I pick up my phone and call my brother, right, Diana? Right. Yeah. It will be there in a second. That's right. And that's what matters. It's not just for me, yeah. for everybody. Right. I remember when I uh, moved to New York, and my husband's mom was called the country, when we went to support him. And uh, I, when I left the house here, and the person who was waiting me was a little mess. Water from the bottom of the, you know, <laughs> downstairs all the way to upstairs. I was so depressed and so angry. And the man was right there. And my brother Joseph, he comes every day. And then the during the time my car got wrecked, my brother was in my home every day. Amen. I used to go to his house to get water. And we had no water, pipe was busted all over the place. It was such a terrible time in my life. But my brother stayed there. Lord. Martin came, fixed my, you know, fixed my uh, pipe. Dinah came, he took the, uh, the carpet off the floor. I mean, Dinah's kids are my kids. Yeah. My kids are hers. And because we're in and out. In and now, my brothers and sisters, hey, we're all in the back side. And that's where we are, close to us. We're going to miss mine. Because there's, you know, there's no other human being like him. Be hard. No judgment. He's always there to help. He has helped me. Let me waste my life that I can live with him. And I tell him that when I came back last week, I sat with him, we had a big talk. That last week with him was a good to me. I don't even miss it anything at all. And as soon as I get home, he said, you know, you stop breathing. And when I, when I tell him before I left, I said, you're going to wait for me? He said, no, yeah. And I know he was in the because he was tired. Mm -hmm. But everywhere it is, I, I pray that, you know, God, you know, leave in peace. Because he was, uh, he was in love. So for all that know him, I thank you. For all that's been in his life, I thank you. For all the help, for all the, you know, in and out dealings with him. Because I know he has touched my life. Because that's the kind of a trust he is. So thank you for the Donald's family. He loved you. He loved you so much, and I know you guys love him. And from that love, he affected me with me, my love for you. Because I'm all, always, and I will always. Thank you. Family and friends, uh, my name is Joe Kamalapi, I'm Marlene's older sister. Uh, if we die based on age, Marlene should be here. But <clears throat> I also want you to know that my parents are still here in their 90s, they're in Atlanta, unfortunately. This happened and they're still here. But I just want you to know that God's plan can never be changed. Okay. So, Mali was born in Nigeria. Those of you who know about the Civil War in Nigeria when we had the Biafra War, one of the things that kept my mom grounded is that she said to me, you know, during the Civil War, my could have, Mali could have been dead or lost. She said to me, um, when the Civil War was on, my parents were taking all of, of us out of Kodakot, where the civil war was very bad. And as they put us all in the van, they left my in behind. When on the way to escape, she started counting my parents have nine kids. So of course, in the middle of the war, how could you manage all these kids? She said in the middle of escaping, she turned around and she said, oh my God, I'm missing a son. And that was Martin. And they have to go back, of course. Thank God Martin was still there standing. So she said to me, you know what? God has a plan. If God wanted to take him, he would have taken him then. Okay. But God has a plan now. I have five grandkids even though Martin is gone. So this is what is consoling my parents. So I want you to be consoled because I believe this is God's plan and God's plan can never change. Amen. And um, everybody have heard about Martin. Martin single-handedly rewired 
our house in New York after a lot of electricians came and put into a good job, put on the fan, did the whole electrical work all by himself. And every time my parents needed help, they would call him, he would get on the plane, he's on to Atlanta to help them. But like I said again, if we die based on age, my parents shouldn't be here, Martin should be. And I myself shouldn't because I'm older than he is. But I believe God's plan is the best. Thank you. Now we'll have a song by Jordan Britt, How Great That Art. Take away my sin. 
When Christ shall come With shout of acclamation And take me home What joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow In humble adoration And there proclaim My God how great I Lord Then sings my soul, oh my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art, then sings John chapter 11. The story is told, very familiar, about Lazarus who had died and what happened to him. In the New Living Translation, beginning of verse 1 says, A man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in a town called Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. It is the Mary who later poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was sick. So the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. But when Jesus heard it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God, so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. 
So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. I'm going to stop the reading there. I'm going to talk from this theme. Jesus cares when your loved one dies. Jesus cares when your loved one dies. It's very interesting that the Bible says that Jesus loved Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. However, when he got the message that Lazarus was sick, he did not come right away. He actually waited two extra days. And in reading that, it sounds like, it looks like, Jesus doesn't care. But Jesus is on a different time frame than we're on. Amen. And Jesus has a bigger purpose than we have. Jesus could very easily have healed Lazarus. He had been healing all through his ministry. But he had a greater purpose that would bring him more glory if he raised Lazarus from the dead. Amen? Amen. And so Mary and Martha were grieving and they said these words, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And isn't that the way we feel sometimes that, God, where were you when, when, when uh, Martin was uh, filled with cancer? Where were you? He was there the whole time. Amen. 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 And so Jesus stayed two extra days so that he could demonstrate his glory. And actually, he was demonstrating, it was a preview of his own resurrection. Yes, sir. You see, the good news is that Jesus Christ came, he died on Calvary's cross, amen, he was buried in the tomb for three days, amen, and on the third day he rose again with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. Amen. And so that's a preview of what he was going to do when he raised Lazarus from the dead, amen. amen. And so the disciples said, well, Jesus is too late. By this time, he, he's sleeping. But if he's sleeping, he will get better. And Jesus said but simply, well, we need to understand something. And saints today, we need to acknowledge the fact when someone dies that they're dead. And we talk about passing away. We're talking about they slept. But it's, it's, it's incumbent upon us to face the fact, the truth, that when a loved one is gone, that they, that they die. And so... Um, Jesus has to tell them very plainly, Lazarus is dead. And listen to this. It sounds like he doesn't care. He says, but I'm glad for your sakes that I wasn't there. Amen. Because I want you to really believe. So let, let's go and see him. And so, of course, Martha and Mary both uh, collude together and say, well, by this time he is stinking. By this time he's decomposing. How many of y'all know that it's never too late for Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. And so, Jesus, let's go to him. Let's go to him. And so, uh, here's the word I want to say to the family that your brother, your father, your, your son, your, your uncle will rise again. Yeah. Those are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it's only for those of us who have trusted Christ as our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Can I see the hands of all who have trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? You will see him again. Amen. And the good news is, although Lazarus died, amen, he will be raised again. There is no second chance. There is no purgatory. There is no reincarnation. Amen. Once you die, then you face the judgment. Amen. And so we, we covet uh, your prayers that if you don't know Christ today, that you would receive him as Lord and Savior. Amen. One of our young men, uh, formerly at Berean, uh, Mylon Rouse, uh, who relocated to Atlanta, I believe, uh, to Tennessee, uh, passed away from a massive heart attack, 43 years old. Amen. Uh, I'm going to eulogize uh, another young boy seen on the news, 12 years old, sitting in his house, playing video games. Somebody shot through the house, shot him in the head and killed 12 years old. That's my point. My point is, you don't have to be old to die. Amen. And it's not a tragedy to die if you know Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says, when a believer dies, they're absent from this body, but immediately present with the Lord. Isn't that good news? So Jesus said, come on, let's go see him. Amen. And then he tells him, he tells Mary and Martha, your brother will rise again. And Martha has some strange theology. She said, yeah, I know he will rise way down the line at the resurrection. 
Amen. The resurrection day. Jesus declares to her, I am the resurrection. And I am the life. In other words, the resurrection is not just an event. The resurrection is a person, and his name is Jesus Christ. In Christ you have life. Amen? Amen. And so Martin believed in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And his whole family believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we need to get ready, amen, to depart from this life. Amen. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even if they die physically. Right. See, there's, there's, a, there's three deaths. There's, there's, there's physical death. There's spiritual death. And that's what you're in if you don't know Christ. And then there's eternal death. And that's what you'll be in if you reject Christ and go to hell. Mm -hmm. amen. amen. So Martin, amen, missed, amen. Urban said it earlier, amen. If you, if you die once, how'd you say that? Born. If you're born once, amen, you die twice. If you're born twice, being born again, you die once. Martin just died once. Amen. Amen. And he's better off than we are right now. Amen. You gotta worry about no COVID shots. You gotta worry about no masks. You gotta worry about no hospice. Matter of fact, I went to see him. Uh, it was Charlotte before he died, and uh, I walked in, and he was kind of sleepy. And I uh, walked in, and he said, "Pastimes!" Lit up like a Christmas tree. And, uh, we had we chatted a little bit, and uh, had a good time of fellowship. Prayed with him, and I remember when they had the surplus store that I would go in there to buy something. And I could never buy anything because he gave me everything. Oh, yeah. Amen. I said, well, let me play. No, no, Pastor, no, Pastor, no. What else, what else you want? Let's look around. <laughs> Amen. So he was a good man, a good brother. Loved his wife, loved his family. Amen. Amen. Loved all of us. Yes. And now he's going home to be with the Lord because Jesus is the resurrection Amen. and the life. And this one, Jesus said, anyone who believes in me will live even after they die physically. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Eternally. Amen. Never die and go to hell. Amen. Never die and be separated from Christ for all eternity. Amen. Do you believe this? Amen. 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 He said, Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Christ, the anointed one, the Son of the living God. You are God in the flesh. Amen. And I know you got the power to raise Lazarus Amen. from the dead. Amen. Amen. So the next time uh, that we see Jesus talking, he says, uh, where have you laid him? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I looked on here. I wanted to find out where we're going to lay uh, Martin Crown Hill. But Jesus wants to know where you're going to lay him because I'm going to raise him up. Amen. 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 Where did you put him? Yeah. Amen. He's been planted. He will be planted very soon in the earth. Amen. But how many of y'all know Jesus has all power? Yeah. Amen. And there is no obstacle that can stop him from raising you from the dead when you know Christ. Amen. 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 And so when he gets there, the Bible says he was moved with compassion. And in the original language, it says he was, he was groaning in the spirit. And in that, that word means he was... He was snorting like a horse because he was mad at the fact that the people around who were weeping did not believe he could do anything. And he was also upset that what death had done once again. Amen. And how many of y'all are mad at death? Amen. Amen. We, one day we won't have to worry about any more death. Jesus was just upset that there's somebody else that died. Somebody I love has died. Somebody you love has died. And I'm upset. But that does not stop me, Jesus says, from raising him from the dead. Amen. Jesus cares because he wept. He wept at the tomb of Lazarus. Now, Jesus, I, I got a question to ask you. Is, you already know you're going to raise him from the dead. Why are you weeping? He's weeping because he wants you to know he cares. Yeah. One of the most precious verses in the Bible is that the two words, Jesus wept. Yeah. And by the way, it didn't say Jesus cried. He said he wept. Ah! He wants to show you that he's feeling what you feel. He is a compassionate God. And when you weep, he weeps. He weeps at what death has done. He weeps at what cancer does. He, he weeps at the sin in the world. He weeps at racism. He weeps at homosexuality. Come on, don't get quiet on me now. He, he weeps at lesbianism because it's not his desire. 
He made them male and female. I'm still in my text. He weeps that we don't believe him. He weeps that any soul drops into hell. He's not willing that any should die. Anybody should die and perish, but that we all would come to repentance. So he's upset. But then he commands, roll away the stone. They didn't bury in tombs, they buried in caves. And they would put uh, stones across the opening of the tomb to keep the wild animals from eating up the body. Amen. We bury in the ground. But they put a stone across the grave. And Jesus says, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. But y'all move the stone. Come on, somebody. And then when they moved the stone, Jesus, with his power, could have called everybody up. That's right. That's right. If he had said, come forward. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. Noah, Isaiah, mm -hmm. Habakkuk would have got up. Amen. But he's very specific yes, he in who he wants. Yes. So all he wanted was Lazarus. He said, Lazarus, come forward. Lazarus was wrapped up in clothes. They didn't embalm in those days. He was wrapped up. Amen. From his head to his toe, he comes hopping out. Amen. Because Jesus has the power to raise the dead. And then Jesus says these words. You move the stone and you untie him. You loose him and let him go. Yes. And the other day, death had to loose Martin. Yes. Amen. And let him go. Yes. And now he's absent from his body. And he's present with the Lord. He's seen the streets that look like gold. He's seen the gates that look like pearls. He's seen, amen, all of those who have died in Christ. And he's waiting on all of us who are left behind. When we're done weeping and crying and grieving and sorrowing, when we know Christ, one day we'll be caught up in the clouds with the Lord. And, and, and Martin will rise first. And those of us who are alive remain be caught up, snatched up, raptured. I call that the great family reunion. Yes. Amen. Yes. Death is not the end, family. It's only the beginning. Amen. Yes. Martin is more alive now than he's ever been because he has a brand new body. He'll never die again. Amen. And the question is, will you meet him there? And the best thing about heaven is that Jesus will be there. Yes. Amen. Bow your heads with me. Father, in the name of Christ Jesus, we thank you that Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. He said in his word, John 14, 6, no one comes to the Father but me. He's the way, the truth, and the life. All these false religious philosophies, God, will damn people's souls to hell. Oh, God, if there's, if there's just one in here today that doesn't know Christ, would you, would you, by your Holy Spirit, convict them of their sin of unbelief? the righteousness of Christ and the judgment they're going to face one day. And then, Father, we pray, praise you that you're the God of all types of comfort, that you're going to wrap your arms around this family, these friends who have come, Lord. And we thank you, Father, that death is not the end for the believer, but only the beginning. And, Father, we're going to weep, we're going to cry, we're going to miss Martin. We're going to miss, Lord, all the things that everybody's been describing, Lord. But, Father, one day we thank you that we'll see him again. And Lord, we just praise you for your Holy Spirit comforting us even in this moment. And we bless you. We honor you. We thank you for your presence and your comfort and your peace in Christ's name. Amen. 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 If there's someone who wants to receive Christ, just let me know or uh, let uh, Pastor Neil know. We'd be happy to talk to you about how to come to Christ. Just believe in the death, burial, resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God has raised him up from the dead, you will be saved and saved forever. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Praise Amen. God. If nothing else. Closing prayer. Uncle Pete. Okay. Can we pop, please? Eternal God, our Father, we are thankful for this opportunity to come into your presence. 
We pray and thank you, Lord, for all that you've done in our life and all that you're going to do. We thank you for the chance to encounter you and your word. We praise and thank you, Lord, for the experiences that you've given us in this life. That we can be a witness for you, to glorify your name. Mm -hmm. We pray, Lord, that you would help this family, yes. that you would show them that you have equipped them because you gave them a father yeah. who was a father that taught them and loved them. Mm -hmm. We thank and praise you, Lord, because he knew that he had to bring his kids to you. It says, train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he departs, when he gets old, he will not depart from it. Yeah, so, Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you. We thank you for the instruction. Mm -hmm. For in your scriptures, you say that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Yeah. So, Lord, we have confidence. Yeah. We know that you'll do what you say because you've always done it. Yeah. So, Lord, we pray that you will continue to be with us. Yeah. Help us, Lord, that we would not be a stomach block, but rather a life worthy of glorifying your name. These are the blessings we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Family and friends, at this time we are preparing to go to the cemetery. If the gentlemen who are serving as pallbearers will please stand and come to the front at this time. The gentlemen who are serving as pallbearers, please stand and come to the front at this time. Ministers, if you all can line up two by two. Gentlemen serving as pallbearers. Ministers, you're going to go out to that black door. Go to your left. Paul Berry, if you're going to follow them, please meet us at the black, the back of the black door. Thank you. Family and friends, if we could all please stand. Family, we ask um, that as we are exiting the chapel, um, we ask that you please do not go out of those white doors. We ask that you please go to the, go out of the black doors to your left where the pallbearers and ministers just went out of. Family and friends, please, please do not go out of the white doors. Please only go out of the black doors at this time.
Going to the cemetery, headlights, four-way flashers. If you're going to the cemetery, headlights, four-way flashers. Oh, Ashley. You're going to the cemetery, headlights, four-way What is Ashley? Can you ask me? Can you go get my charger? Please. Oh, I forgot. And somebody's phone is also there too. The bad teacher don't want to send the kidney phone to Don't reduce. So that my phone has gone. Are you going to see? Get it? Oh, I'm going to see. I'm going to see. I'm going to see. I'm going to see. So they could start chasing the car. I'll give you another hug.
Like Martin, so no? um, not Martin, like Junior, like the father. Huh? Hey. I lost, you know, I lost my uh, somebody. Oh, the whole thing? The, the charger, I was, I was using was to charge the phone. Oh. Somebody unplug it and hold on to it. Was it 630? 